It's found in Job, the 42nd chapter. That's in the Old Testament. If you're in the New Testament, you way off. Job 42, and we want to thank God for those that may be watching by YouTube. We appreciate each and every one of you that tune in to our channel every week. We thank you. And I want to thank those down in Alabama uh, at Walmart. My sister works at us about 30 of them that watch it every time we air it. So I want to thank God for those in Birmingham, Alabama. Those all over the country and all over the world, wherever this video goes, we don't know where it goes, but it goes everywhere. Amen. And we Amen. want to thank God for our invisible audience that watch us every week. We love you here in New Mount Island. And we thank you and we pray the blessings of the Lord be yours. And the hand of God be on you for good and I pray that you live as long as you want. And never want as long as you live. Amen? Amen. Job Chapter 42, verse 1. Then answered the Lord, then Job answered the Lord and said, Now this is the this is Job talking to the Lord. I know that thou canst do everything, and that no fault can be withholding from thee. Who is he? He asked the question. That hideth counsel without knowledge. Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Here's the actual text. I have heard of thee. Y'all gonna get with me? Amen. By the hearing of the ear. Uh -huh. But now. Somebody shout now. Now. Now my eye. Seeth thee. Uh -huh. You close the book. Amen. I have heard of thee. Yes. Well I'm going to preach if y'all help me. Come on Peter. Yeah. I've heard of you Lord. Yes. By the hearing of the ear. Uh -huh. But now. But now. My eye. Oh, yeah. yes. Seeth thee. Yes. Will you tell the woman beside you loud as you can? Say, neighbor, neighbor. I've seen it, I've seen it for, myself. for myself. Say it again, oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. I've, seen it I've seen it for myself. myself. Job said, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just about done, y'all. Well, but Job said, I, I have taken it on personally. Because there's one thing to hear about something. Uh huh. Come on, somebody. Say, or to say. hear about somebody, it's different to know them. Yes. yes. You say know, you say, well, I know of so and so. Uh -huh. yes. I never met them, but I've heard of them. Okay. But I don't know them. Amen. And that's because you can't prejudge people. Amen. Well, I preach it. Y'all hit me. You can't let people put stuff in your ear by people, Amen. and then you judge them by what you heard, and you never met the person. Say it, Pastor. They put stuff in your ear and say that person is evil and wicked and nasty and that person may be the sweetest person in the world. Amen. Because you did not take time to get to what? To get to know. You just heard about them. That's it. And that's the way it is in the world. A lot of people have heard about Jesus, but a lot of people really don't know him. It's one thing to hear about the Lord and to hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and all those Bible stories and what the Lord can do for you, but then there's something else when you know personally. Jesus. Come on, say amen. amen. You go around here all day long saying, I know Biden, I know Obama, I know Michelle. Amen. I know of them. I know of them. Well, do you know them personally? Have they ever met you? No. But I, I know of them. All right. But it's another thing where you can say, oh, yeah, I had coffee with them. All right. I was invited to the White House. I was in the White House. Yeah. In other words, I got a personal relationship yeah. with them. Is that right? Yeah. Come on, say amen. amen. And we got to stop going off of what we hear. Yeah. Say it. Come on now. Say it. Go off of what you see. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. All right. Huh? Not only go off of what you see, but please go off of what you know. Because sometimes it ain't what you see. Trick your eyes can play tricks on you. It. it ain't what it looked like. Come on, somebody. Amen. 
Come on, say amen. amen. Uh, you can see somebody going in the liquor store. You declare they're going in there to get liquor. That don't mean they're going in there to get liquor. Then they're going in there to get a Coke. Amen. A cola. Ah. But just because you saw them going in the liquor store, you almost had a wreck trying to dial your phone to tell Sister to Tomato, God, guess who I just drove by. Say and next thing you know, you be just spread because gossip spreads quick. And next thing you know, you just killed that person's character because you thought you saw what you didn't see. That's right. Yes, sir. Come on, say amen. amen. In the Old Testament, you have to have three witnesses yes. in order to, 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 to say something against somebody's character. You just couldn't say, well, I saw that. You have to have you and three other witnesses. Yes. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Come on, say hallelujah. So we got to learn how to stop judging people by what somebody else told us about them. Jesus, say it. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. I've seen it it. for myself. myself. It's just like when you growing up and your mother telling you about Jesus and you sitting in the church and you hearing the choir sing about him. You sitting in the church, you hearing the preacher preach about him. If you're a young fella and you don't really know what you're listening to, but then you become of age and it becomes of understanding to you about Jesus. And you come out out and you confess Jesus Christ. Now you ain't just heard about him. You got a relationship with him. Yes, yes, come on, can I get a witness? I'm afraid there's a lot of people in our churches that have come in under the wire. What do you mean come in under the wire, Pastor? That means they've been in the church, but they never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if you can't tell what happened and when it happened and how it happened, it never happened. And your day of salvation is, 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 listen, your day of when you got saved is more important than your wedding day. It's more important than your first kiss. It's more important than your first girlfriend or boyfriend. You may forget all of them days, but you got to remember like it was yesterday when the Lord came into my heart. When I came, I wish I would have had some help. But I gave God my life. I can tell you the day of the week it was. I can tell you the year it was. Some of you women got such good detail, you remember what you was wearing. Come on, because women remember, brother. Yes, yes. They remember. Come on, brother, because y'all help me. Yes, women got minds better than men when it comes to remembering. And they can remember the date and the time and what he had on and what he said and how he said. Yes, he be the long forgotten. Yes, sir. Amen. She said, yes, you did. You had on a blue suit, blue sock. Yeah, you did. You had braids in your hair. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've seen it for myself. We, this is the type of salvation. This is the type of religion that you got to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You cannot allow people to be the in the in between person. Amen. You know, in between person is a person in between you and God. And that person goes to God for you. No, the Bible says I can come boldly before the throne of grace. I can go to God for myself. I don't have to go to no priest. Come on, somebody. I ain't got to sit in no booth. Come on here. I ain't got to sit in no closet and tell the priest my sin with nine them out of ten. He done done ten times worse than me. But I can come straight to God. Well, talk to me, y'all. The Bible said we have access to the Father. You can go straight there. You ain't got to be in my out of building. You ain't got to be in no cathedral. You can be right there on your job and talk to God. Yes. Why? Because I got a personal relationship with Jesus. Yes. I know him. Tell somebody I know him. I know him for myself. For myself. Oh yes, Dad, I heard about him. Uh-huh. Hallelujah! When I was when I was a, a junior deacon in Mitchell age, I heard about Jesus. Yes. But one day I met him. Amen. One day I knew him for myself, and I said, "This is what Mama was talking about." Uh-huh. I remember mama used to talk about a God that'll make you cry when ain't nothing funny. A God will make you laugh, uh, make you uh, make you run when ain't nobody behind you. Talk to me, somebody, uh-huh. and I can understand it as a young convert. But as I got older, uh-huh. I know what mama was talking about when you said to make you laugh, but ain't nothing funny. Make you cry, and ain't nobody bothering you. Make you run, and ain't nobody behind you. I don't know about y'all, but I wouldn't serve a God that I couldn't feel sometimes. Amen. You can be in these dead religions all you want, but give me a religion I can feel. Amen. Give me a God that can go on the altars of my heart. Give me a God that'll make me cry. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. Give me a God that'll make me sorry when I do wrong. Yes. Talk to me, somebody. Give me a God that'll let me know that everything is going to be all right. And all I got to do is keep on praising him. 
Tell somebody I've seen it for myself. When you've seen it for yourself, amen, you're an eyewitness to it. Is that right? Yes. When you're eyewitness up in New York, I think they still got it deep. They call it Eyewitness News. Uh -huh. Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Yeah. Amen. And that news cancel is different from the other news reporters because Eyewitness News said, I witnessed that. Uh -huh. In other words, we had, some, we had a reporter on the scene while it was happening. Yeah. And we ain't getting it second hand. Come on, somebody. We getting it first hand because what? Because I've seen it for myself. for myself. Will you say, praise the Lord? Praise I've seen it. Come on, say hallelujah. Praise I've seen it for myself. I know what God can do. Yes. I know him as a healer. Yes. I know him as a way maker. Yes. I know him as a burden bearer. Yes. I know him as a heavy no shadow. Yes. I know him as a friend that walk in when everybody walk out. Uh -huh. Do you know him this morning? Yes. I said, do you know him this morning? Yes. Uh, do you know him or, or are you just taking somebody's word? Hallelujah. I got a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. I can tell you what he can do for me. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. All I want to know is how much time you got. All right. Praise the Lord. Because when you're talking about Jesus, you're talking about a friend of mine. Yes. Hallelujah. I just can't see. I can't but see myself into an A and B conversation when they talking about Jesus. Hallelujah! Come on, somebody. Have you ever been around people and they were talking about Jesus? And maybe you were standing in the line and you didn't know them. And they start talking about a good, come on, they start talking about a good God here. And you start witnessing to them. Amen. Amen. That's right, baby. That's it. You don't know them people from a can of paint or so. That's it. And you done seed your way into an A and B conversation. Yes, sir. Because when you're talking about Jesus, yes, I wish y'all wake up. Yes, sir. When you're talking about Jesus, you're talking about a friend of mine. Amen. And if I'm anywhere around you when you're talking about him, I got to say something. Yes. Come on, talk to me, somebody. I can't hold my peace, Wayne. I got to open my big belly and I got to say something. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But the news people know. say, see, see something, say something. Uh -huh. That's what the police say, right? Mm. That's when it comes to criminals. But what about when it comes to witnesses to Jesus Christ? You ought to say something. Say something. You ought not let that conversation end without you putting your little two cents in it. Amen. So let me get a part of that. Let me tell you what he done for me. That's let it. me tell you how he brought me out. Let me tell you how he healed my body. Amen. Let me tell you how he was with me in the hospital. And I didn't think I was going to get out. Talk to me. Oh and the doctor shook his head. But God stepped in my room. How many know God will come in your room? Tell somebody, God will come in your room. Hallelujah, your sick room. I don't want to tell what kind of room you're in. Talk to me, because yes. God will come in there. Yes, he will. By God, Fanny, I've seen it for myself. Yes. It's just like it's just like football. I don't know if y'all got any football fans in here or sports fans, yes. but it's just like football. It's one thing to watch it on television, yes. but it's another yes. thing to go there. Y'all yes. yes. ain't talking to me. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I saw it on TV Sunday night. And you said, I can do you one better. I was there. All right. Woo, I was so close as the sweat fell off of him and hit me. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was so close I could reach out and touch him. Ain't nothing like being there as opposed to seeing it on TV. It's the same way with Jesus. Yes. yes. Amen. Better to know him than to know about him. Amen. Am I preaching? Preach. Preach. Should I preach? Preach. Shall I preach? preach. Shall I preach? preach. Paul told me and said, preach to him. Preach. I've seen it. For myself. Yes. And here y'all know about Job and my conclusion. And Job was something, wasn't he? Yes. Yes. Job loved the Lord. Is that right? Yes. And the Lord loved Job. Uh -huh. But Job went through some things. Yes, he did. Job lost a lot, didn't he? Uh -huh. Job, his life was messed up. The Bible says he was a man that extumed the evil. Oh, yeah. That means he was a righteous man. He was an uprighteous man. Yes. I go so far as to say, Brother Butch, he was a church man. And he believed in prayer. And he believed in covenant relationship with God. But trouble hit him. Talk to me somebody. What yes, it old saying on the side of that Morton salt box when it rained? It pours. It pours. And it wasn't one thing that hit him, but it was a, it was a conglomeration of things yes. that hit him. Yes. He began to lose this, that, and the other. Lost all his children. Seven sons and three daughters. All of them dead yes. at one time. Yes, sir. Lost his cattle, lost his sheep. Everything. Talk to me, lost his mule, lost everything. Uh -huh. Then he turned around on top of that, he lost his wife. Yeah. Oh right. no, she didn't die, but she left him. Because yeah. when he was going through all that hell, Wayne, she asked her husband a question. She said, Do you still maintain 
integrity. That means, Job, out of all the hell you're going through, are you still saved? All right. In other words, she said, Job, out of all the hell you're going through, do you still love the Lord? Out of all the hell you're going through, Job, is he still all right with you? Yeah. And then she told him to cuss God and die. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Y'all, yeah. you get with me. I'll be doing this. Yeah. Say, cuss God. That was worse enough. But she didn't leave it there, man, and Jonathan. She said, cuss God and die. Yeah. In other words, she gave up on her own husband. Yeah. In other words, she was waiting on the insurance policy. Uh -huh. Talk to me here. Yeah. I don't know we're living in a world today, folks won't, they won't wait till you die to start splitting up your money. You could be in there taking your last breath and they talk about who's going to get what. Yes, Hallelujah. Look like you got a cold. You can wake up with the sniffles and they even start dividing your money. That's right. Lord have mercy. Folk used to have enough uh, respect and courtesy to wait until they put you in the ground. Yes. But before the funeral home get your body, Amen. I'm taking the truck. I'm taking the car. Amen. I'm taking the pot sets. I'm taking the skillets. Amen. I'm taking the jewelry. I'm taking the shoes. Hallelujah. And they be divided up in stuff that you ain't even dead. Yes. And that was an insult to Job for her to say, curse God and die. In other words, I'm tired of you living, Job. Uh -huh. I can't That's move on with my next fool or my next husband until you out of here. All right now. Oh, people can be low down, can't they? Yeah, they can. We live in a world with a lot of low down people. Yeah. They low down, honey. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes, it is. Anytime you kill for it and you steal for it, it becomes evil. Yes. But then the Bible said money answers all things. Yes. Money is not evil in itself. The love of it. You go to doing ungodly stuff for it. Yes. When a woman will stand out there on the street corner and sell her body pound for pound and ounce for ounce, it become wicked. Yes. When a woman will give up her child for a hit of crack, mm. she'll sell the baby for crack. Jesus. Sell the baby for a car. Uh -huh. Five dollars, you can have my car. Yes. Don't think I'm exaggerating, but they do. It's true. They had an addiction so bad. Be a soul. You leave them in your house if you want them. Come back. You ain't got walls on the on the walls. <laughs> in the soul of the chandelier, they, the soul of light switch. You gonna leave them in your house? Come on, say amen. amen. You can lock your stuff up as good as you want to lock it up. They got there. Find a way to get in it. That crack will find a way to get in there. Come on, talk to me. I know what I'm talking about. It's in my family. It's in your family. And you know the last thing you do is leave it at home at your house. Am I preaching wrong? No, no, no. That's the last thing you want to do. Come on, I know my daughter. Yeah, you think you know her. But you don't know the demon in her. And that demon in her will be to rob you blind. Take you like Grant took Richmond. Tell somebody I've seen it for myself. And Job began to lose everything he had. And, and then the Bible said he had four friends. A lot of times we preachers say he had three. But if you read it, he actually had four friends. Uh -huh. And their job was to do two things. Their job was to mourn and comfort Job. That's it. But then when these four friends came to Job, Brother Bitter, for seven days, mm. they didn't open their mouth. Wow. They just sat there and looked at him. Can you imagine going through hell and the people you want to help you sit there and look at you? That's got to be torment right there. Especially if they sit there looking at you and they got the stuff that can help you. Yes. But for seven days at the Western, they didn't say nothing. And then when they did open their mouth, they accused you. That's it. They say, yeah, Job, you call yourself a Mr. Goody Two-Shoe and you act like you so holy and you so righteous and you so pious. Look at you now. Uh-huh. And they begin to frame their mouth, Brother Deacon. And one by one, they begin to say, surely you must have sinned somewhere. Somewhere. Uh -huh. They looked at him standing here and said, God paying you back. That's it. And people got this strange idea of thinking that when somebody falls into misfortune, God must be paying them back. That ain't always the case. Amen. Oh, come on, y'all. Help me now. Come on, see there, God just getting them back. Don't even let that come out your mouth because it may be your turn next. That's right. Just because you fall into misfortune, that don't mean that God has forsaken you. Amen. Who was that? Uh, Paul said, I had a thorn in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, y'all. Right. 
He said, I got a thorn in the flesh. He said, and I went to God three times about it. And God wouldn't move it. And God told Job, I'm going to make you live with it. But one thing it ain't going to do, it ain't going to kill you. Right. And another thing it's going to do for you is going to keep you humble. Amen. Well, I'm going to say amen. amen. That thorn wasn't there to kill him. It was to keep him humble. Lest he would exalt himself above measure that was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Yes. It may have been from Satan, but God used it to humble you. That's right. Amen. I don't care how the Lord bless you and how rich you become and how famous you become. Keep the common touch. Yes. Don't never get so high that you too high for God. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. There's one thing I detest, and there's many things I detest, but one thing I detest about preachers, I hate them conceited preachers. That's right. yes, them conceited preachers that think the spirit don't come till they get up. All right. Folk can shout I got the mic. Oh, oh. You ain't nothing to God. Mm -hmm. I said, you ain't nothing to God. God can take that two by four breath out your body and use somebody greater than you. Yes, so if the Lord use you, the Bible said in the Old Testament, the Bible said this, and I like this. The Bible said, David behaved himself. Yes. I ain't got no help here. That means no matter how much the Lord bless you, behave yourself. Amen. Tell somebody, behave yourself. Say it louder, behave yourself. Stay humble. Yes. The way up is down. I said the way up is down. down. You want to go up? Stay down. Stay down. And when the Lord bless you, tell God thank you. Thank you Don't pat yourself on the back. Don't stick your chest out like you all that. Because you ain't nothing to God. God can make another one of you in the, in the back of an eye. But if he use you, be humble and say, well, Lord, I thank Lord, you. I thank and Job was not conceited. Job was an humble man. Yes. He began to lose and his friends and them had to come, they were supposed to mourn with him, but they came over there and they accused Job. Yes. But I want you to notice in my conclusion that nowhere when Job was going through did he ever blame God. Amen. Never blame God. Never. He may have questioned why. Job didn't have a problem with suffering. He just wanted to know why. Why? And that's what the average person want to know. If an average person is suffering something and they know they didn't do nothing to bring it on them, the first question, they're going to say, why me? Why me? All right. Yes, sir. But sometimes it's not for you to know why. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't here. Yes. Job didn't have no problem suffering. He wanted to know why. Yes. But then we find Job in Job 41, we find Job talking to God. Yes. And Job began to talk to God. Uh-huh. And he was talking to God in such a way that God had to respond. Yes. Talk to me somebody. Yes. And we find God in the latter part of the 41st chapter of, of Job responding to Job. Yes. He said, now Job, you want to question me. Where were you, Job? Uh-huh. When I hung the sky like a curtain. Come on. All right. Where were you, Job? When I made lightning zigzag across the universe. Jesus. Where were you, Job? When I caused the water to roar like a lion. Uh -huh. Then God got on Job case so bad to Job uttered the words of Psalm 40, uh, of Job 42. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do anything. Anything. And that no thought can be withheld from me. Yes. Who is he? That hid his counsel without knowledge. Look what Job said. After God got through with Job's stance, look what Job said. Therefore, I have uttered that I understood not. Amen. Somebody will get this later. Amen. Job said, I thought I understood. Woo! I understood. <laughs> Job said, I thought I knew something, but after all I find out, I didn't know nothing. I didn't know anything. Look what he said. I understood not. Didn't you say that? Yeah. Things yeah. too wonderful for me. Yes. Job said, I can't even grasp it. Yeah. Job said, God is infinite, but my mind is finite. Finite means limited. Yes. And Job tried to understand the vastness of God, and no man can do that. Yes. Job said, I understand not. Mm -hmm. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Look at me. I thought I knew it. Mm -hmm. I thought I had God wrapped up. Say it. I thought I put God in a box. All right. But he's so wise you can't contain him. Can't contain him. 
He's so high you can't go over. He's so low you can't go under. He's so wise you can't go around me. Oh, I preach if y'all help me here. Verse number five, I've heard of thee. By the hearing of the ear. But now, now. I've seen it for myself. <laughs> I heard about it. I heard him to be a doctor in a sick room. Uh -huh. I heard him to be a lawyer in a courtroom. Oh, yeah. I heard him to be a friend that walks in when everybody walk out. Jesus. I heard him to be a man to fight my enemies. I heard him to be a tree by the river of the water that brings forth fruit. I heard about him being a good shepherd. Thank he you. said, when well, I've seen it. Thank you, God. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now. Thank you, Lord. My eye. Behold. Yes, thank you, God. I've seen it for myself. For myself. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Ain't nobody got to tell me nothing now. Mm -mm. I done messed around here and got a personal glimpse yes. into this thing called God. That's it. And I used to have to go up and piggyback off of somebody else's testimony, but now I got my own testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I wish y'all clap your hands for you. Now I got my own testimony, and I ain't got to piggyback off of mama's. I ain't got to pick it back off Evangelist Johnson right. testimony. I got my own. Uh -huh. Tell somebody I got my own. I got my own. Tell Laura, I got my own. I got my you own. You ain't got to pick it back off of your wife. Uh -uh. You got to know it for yourself. Amen. You can't pick it back off of your aunt. You got to know it for yourself. Yeah. Just like Auntie get up and talk about him, when you become personal to him, you will get up and talk about him. Yes. Yeah. I've seen it. For myself. I'm done. I'm done. Amen. I've seen it. 